Uh, so guys, we're here with the one, the only Kayatan. Hello. Uh, he topped once again, um, playing uh, sword sword tennis. That's right. That's right. Uh, we are here in McDonald's, of course. <laughs> Our, st our stomping ground. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think you went 5 and 1. Yes, in Swiss. Swiss. Yeah, and then I lost in top card. You were fourth, right? After Swiss, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's okay. just start with the main act. So I played three Moe, of course, three Long Yuan, uh, two Taya, and three Ecclesia. So <clears throat> this card is insane. Uh, I really don't recommend cutting this card to two because. It just comes up, it's one of the reasons why this deck is so strong going second, it's one of the reasons why you can break board so efficiently. Um, originally I played only one Taya before Desires uh, went back to two, but right now I just didn't feel comfortable. I don't think Taya is the most ideal card to draw, but it's good to, to like top deck, it's also good. It's like, most of the time it still works as a starter. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for tennis I play uh, three Ashuna, two Adara, two Vishuda and one Shtana. So I cut down on Tenny's a bit. Um, the reason being is that without Hulk, Adara just isn't uh, as useful because you can't you can't like force a hand trap on your opponent and then just go into Hulk play. So re realistically, Tenny's are only like really good and are only like pseudo starters when you draw Ashuna. So that, that's why I played two two of these because like drawing multiples is just not good. And obviously, you still play one Shtana because it just makes the entire package more flexible. Um, <clears throat> then some hand traps. Uh, we play three Ash and three Diddy Crow. Uh, Ash is like the most versatile hand trap right now. It's also great versus Despia, which was my, which is like by far the best deck right now. So I really had to prepare for this matchup, which is also the reason why I play three Crow in the main deck. It's also a very versatile card and doesn't get stopped by stuff like um, um, Branded Lost and similar cards. So it's definitely better than Bell right now. Okay. Um, going to the spells, uh, three emergence, obviously, uh, your, your search card. Uh, then I played uh, three droplet. So most of the time I hate playing droplet and, and a bunch of hand traps. But I feel like the discard is just so versatile right now that you kind of have to play it. I was, temp uh, I was contemplating on playing either this or chalice, but at the end of the day, this card gives you a better matchup against side decks, which are still alive, and some random combo decks. I didn't really want to play like main chalice and side droplet as well, so I just decided to main main droplet. Because at worst you're still discarding like one or two cards. And also even against Despia when where chalice would generally shine, there's some scenarios where you just want to discard two and just stop both masquerades. Okay. So yeah, I decided to play droplet in the main deck. And then I play two circle and two vessel. Um, so I kept the ratio from before the Hulk, the Hulk ban or the Aurodon ban. And I think this ratio definitely works. I I, don't, I didn't want to play three of these because they aren't starters by themselves and and like you, do, you, really, you really don't want to draw them in multiples and you also don't want to draw like one vessel, one circle. It's not the most ideal thing to draw because you still need a tiny to start your plays with and you're kind of equivalent. Um, so vessel is like, vessel gives you maybe more advantage but circle, or, but circle um, helps you play around hand traps. So yeah, two two I think it's a very good ratio. Okay. Then we play Two Desires, it's back and it's a super, it's a super strong card. Um, this deck loves the additional, card, the additional like plus one this, this card gives because, because it just makes your, your whole hand stronger and more versatile. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a very, very cool card. Um, and one called by, I still decided to play it despite the fact that DP is gone um, because it's still a great card um, for obviously stopping hand trap, but also going second, it's still insanely good versus Despia, it's basically another pro. And you know, it like comes up, it like comes up going second as well, which is the reason I chose the main one. And then for the traps, uh, three impermanence. It's like a, one of the most versatile hand traps. It's also good, like it's always good. So decided to run it. Um, yeah, nothing more to be said about impermanence. And one blackout, obviously. Uh, extra deck. It's also pretty standard. So we start off with two grandmaster, obviously. Two Baxia, uh, never really needed a second one, but it's still good to have because it's, it's like soft once per turn, so you can just clear the cold boards, especially with one particular side deck card that we'll talk about later. And then uh, one Yazi uh, that I never made, sadly. Uh, one Draco Berserker, um, one Chao Feng that I again reintroduced in my deck. It's a very solid card. 
um, the the effect that like that goes off when you destroy the monster definitely comes up. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good card. It's also like randomly good versus like agents and drytrons, which is cool, I guess. And one Chang Ying and one Qi Jing. So Chang Ying became a lot better because we desire this card can actually get to some huge numbers and can really help with OTKs. And these guys, I think, still better than Baron because it just has to draw more cards. It's also like two interruptions. It's much, much better for the grind game. You don't play Baron right now? Yeah, I do, I do. But it, but I prefer making making uh, Qi Jing okay. over Baron in like okay. blind. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, can you show that again? The last one? Oh uh, yeah, I prefer to make to make uh, Qi Jing oh, okay, blind. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then uh, one Crimson Blader and one Baron. So, so Crimson is a uh, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's med I mean, it's medical. It's like very strong in mirror match if you aren't able to OTK. It's also very good versus Despia because they basically can fusion summon next turn. Yes. So yeah, so it was either this or Drag Eye, and I feel like I have enough st enough things for uh, back row decks in my side deck. Um, so I didn't really, I wasn't really too comfortable in playing Drag Dragon because I felt like this card really gives you an edge against. Like best two decks, okay. and Brown is still here. It's like still one of the best cards for sure. And then um, three monk. Um, now you have the. Now you, now you can afford to play the third one. It definitely comes up because right now we can just start throwing around monks, and you're never really gonna run out of them. Yeah. So yeah, it's a cool card. And one shaman, still one of the best cards. Really helps to get out of sticky situations in the grind game, going sank and whatever. It's really good because because it can revive the sank pro, and it's also super good because. You can like revive a monk and pop um, a token collector. So with like with, with this battle phase effect, so it's it's a really really versatile, really good card. Okay, nice. Um, so Psyduck is maybe a bit more spicy. Um, the reason it. it's a bit more spicy is because uh, I lost my lightning storms and the one I ordered didn't come. <laughs> so it's still a bit a big mystery. But yeah, so I had to adapt. So first of all, I decided to play three mine instead of bell. So before the ban list, I played three bell. Because it's, because it was really good versus prank kids and DPE, and right right now I decided to swap it out for Mystic Mine because this card just destroys Despias and destroys Flunders and destroys so many decks that just don't make monster negates when they're going first. And it seems like most decks do it this way, and like almost no deck, it, it, no one is going to actually side in Span Trap removal versus Sword so when they're going first. So yeah. most of the time when I when I resolve this card, I would just wait for them to deck out because. There's no point in trying to play because they can't out discard 90% of the time. Um, three Twin Twisters, so again, it's a very good card because like, it's because good versus back row and also sided in against, against Despia. It definitely came up because it can also stop Lost, which is, which is really practical because it, like, because it just, because it, because it makes it easier to, if you don't OTK, it makes it easier to, to um, stop their plays with like Imperms and Chi Zhaos because Lost isn't there anymore. And also, mm -hmm. Hits impairment stuff, so I think this card was really good. It's also good versus versus um, yeah, like I said, it's also solid versus Flanders, but I didn't play any today. Um, then for the spicy card, um, I decided to run two anti magic arrows and on red reboot. So this is basically three copies of red reboot. Red reboot. Uh, this deck really has the capacity to to like trade its battle phase for basically a red reboot like effect. Because you're able to go for multiple boxes, yeah, you're able to go for Baron, Baron, and you're just able to clear entire boards. It's an insane surprise card that really catches most people off guard. It, because most people think that if you, when you're going to battle phase, they think you're going for evenly, so they won't chain everything, um, and they and think they're going to be safe with their judgments. And this card just completely destroys this kind of decks. Because I anticipated uh, Brandon Eldridge to be one of the more annoying decks to deal with today, which it was. Um, and then I also decided to play six going first cards, uh, and I decided to play three anti spell and three barrier. So the sad truth is that this deck going first isn't the most amazing thing in the world. Like it's definitely breakable, especially with going with, with like side deck cards. Um, so I had to play some cards that prevent my opponent from playing. And every time, so every time you see either of these two cards when you're going against Despia, you, pr you pretty much won the game. And against and against like Mirror Magic, this card is still broken. So yeah, like I said, th these these cards are incredibly important in just securing going first wins. And I'm really glad I played six going first cards. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's it. Um, what were your matchups like? Oh yeah. So I played against Agents, Virtual Worlds, Sword Soul. Um, then I think I played against um, like good stuff, Eldritch, and then against Despia. 
in the top card I play versus Dry Charms. Okay. Yeah, so your only loss was against the good stuff Eldritch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then top card. Yeah, okay. I sadly against Eldritch, I just didn't draw out to, to side both games, so I just had no choice but, but to concede. And then against Dry Charms, I think I messed up a bit. Both my opponent like opened godlike hands and won the die roll. So yeah, that uh, that Eldritch deck was crazy. I watched your game. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really hard because when they make perfection and like ruler with like yeah, three yeah. negates, it's it's super hard to break. So yeah, um, congratulations again. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully, well, I know we will uh, see you again in uh, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also at, hope that at nationals. Uh, yeah. So yeah, um, thank you for your deck profile and uh, congratulations. See you.